This is my new favorite picture that I just created a couple of days ago, and it's a bleeding heart organ and a brain, and it's supposed to be a balance between the two. And in this 15 minute video, I will show you how I edited this picture. First, here's a little preview of the editing process sped up, entirely sped up. Um, and then I'll slow it down in a bit and start from the beginning. But basically, the heart organ and the brain are just drawings. Free stock images that I got from deviantart.com and used in my photo. After the composite was complete, I used three to five different brook shade and textures, added color to them. Then I used selective color adjustment layers, curves, and other features on Photoshop to create the final image and the final product. So I'm standing on a stool. I used a Bauer RC remote to take the picture of myself on the stool. I pointed my toe, which I knew I would rotate later in Photoshop. And I'm holding a giant fake rose. And I'm using the stem of the fake rose as the part that's helping me balance on the rope. And now I just selected the photo and I'm rotating it slightly clockwise so that I'm not walking straight on the rope. I kind of want to be at a curve. Next, I'm going to hit the letter B on my keyboard to bring up the brush tool. And I'm going to use white paint to just fill in the open gaps. Then I'm going to create a background copy layer and I'm going to use the lasso selection tool to quickly create a selection around my body, then inverse the selection by going to select inverse and then filling in the selection with white paint with the brush tool. And after I do that, I'm going to se select the polygonal selection tool, which is different than the lasso. When using the polygonal selection tool, it allows you to create dots around the selection you're trying to create, which therefore creates lines. So if you're just trying to do a really detailed job, you want to go with the polygonal selection tool, which I use all the time if I want to place my subject on a different background or that sort of thing. And even though I'm speeding this process up, it took almost an hour just to outline my body and the stem of the rose that I'm holding so I could make the entire background completely white. And I want to make the background white instead of black because it's easier to add cool looking textures and then add color to the textures. Whereas with black, it would just be super dark and I think I might blend in a little bit because my dress is kind of dark anyways. So now that I'm done with the selection, I'm going to connect it all together until I see the marching ant. And when I see the marching ants, I'm going to hit B on my keyboard just like before. And I'm going to fill in the selection using the paintbrush tool with white paint. Because I just want a completely white background. And it's kind of hard going around the hair, but I'm just going to do the best that I can do. I'm going to image then canvas size because I want to increase the width and the height of the picture overall because I realize I want my subject to look smaller because I need enough room for the rope and the two organs otherwise it might be a little crammed and after doing that I realize I want my subject rotated even more so I just transform the image by selecting it by hitting command A then command T which allows me to rotate the image and then I hit enter and now once again I'm using the polygonal selection tool to do what I've just did which is just to get more of the background completely white. So I'm creating a selection till I see the marching ants, then using the paintbrush tool to paint within that selection completely white. The next step is just a general color correction. So I'm using a curves layer. I just pulled the line up from the middle to add more lighting to the photo and the top of the line to the left to add more contrast and better lighting and then a couple more adjustments on that curved line on that layer and then this is the before and after of what I just did. So even the background, the white, looks more white as opposed to like a whitish cyan. And at first I wanted to go with this uh, cloudy background but it didn't really work and I didn't really like where it was going so I kind of trashed that. And then I brought up this old picture that I created years ago because I didn't have a good picture of a rope and I couldn't find the rope that I normally have in my apartment. So whatever, it's my own picture. I decided to copy and paste the rope from another picture that I created years ago and use it in this picture. And you know what? It actually worked really, really well. So I'm glad I did that. Even though it looks a little thick right now, I will admit, 
but as you will see in a minute in this video, I will shorten the rope and make it a lot thinner. But the first thing is to place it under my feet and I'm just using a layer mask and a paintbrush tool with white paint over black paint to paint the, the layer of the rope back in around the toes of my feet. And then I'm going to drag that layer and duplicate it, the rope layer, so that I have extra rope to work with. And I'm just going to align that the best that I can so it looks like one fluid rope kind of stretching across the photo. And once again, I'm just using a layer mask and the paintbrush tool to erase away. And here I'm holding down the shift button and painting in a straight line. When you hold down the shift button while using the paintbrush tool, it allows you to paint away in a straight line, especially if you're using like a hard kind of brush. So I think that looks a lot better. I don't know if you will agree, but I like the, the, the look of the thin line a lot better than the thick rope. And then I'm just copying and pasting the stem of the fake rose that I was originally holding and I'm just copying and pasting different lines so I could um, connect that to the two organs that I'm going to add in just a couple of minutes. So I'm just using that as like the balance and it actually came together pretty well. I wouldn't have thought originally that just using the stem of a fake rose would actually look pretty cool in a balancing act sort of way. And now I'm bringing on the heart organ, which I think I mentioned before is a drawing from deviantart.com where it's a great website where you can use free stock images in your pictures any way that you wish. And originally the drawing was black and white, but no problem. I'm going to use my curves layer and make it completely red and pink like a regular heart, which actually turned out a lot cooler than I thought it would. So yeah, here's my curves layer. And I'm bringing the line of the red channel up to add more redness. And then now I'm on the green channel and I just made it more magenta by bringing the green layer down. Now I'm bringing on the brain organ, which was originally very small looking in the beginning. And then I transformed it by hitting Command T on my keyboard, which allowed me to stretch it out, make it really large. And it didn't really lose any resolution, so it worked for what I was trying to do. And I'm using the curves layer, the blue layer on the curves channel, just to make the brain blue. And once again, I'm just pulling the line up on the blue channel to make it blue. And then the next step is to use brushes, Photoshop brushes that you can download from Google, from pretty much anywhere. I'm just using a hairbrush. It's super simple. You select the color you want and then use the brush, paste it on, and it just looks really cool. So I just like the little detail of the hair flip. Now I'm using the dodge tool to brighten up my legs and my face. And I just want to do this before I add on the textures because doing this after the textures could look kind of weird to the texture so I don't want to affect the texture with the dodge tool so I'm doing that before the texture and look at the difference the before and after so I always use the dodge tool pretty much in like every picture that I do just depending what needs to be dodged whatever um, and then I'm the next step is to start the process of the texture application. So I'm using Brooks Shade and Texture, and I'm going to start off with a color texture, which I almost never use because usually all my textures are black and white. But she actually has some really cool colors that already have a color to them. So I'm going to start off with using this blue one and then Command T to make the layer a lot larger, stretch it out. And then I'm going to use the multiply blending mode to blend in the texture. And then I'm going to correct that texture blending mode with a curves layer. And I'm just pulling the line up to brighten the texture. And the curves, just keep in mind this curves layer is only affecting the texture, not the rest of the picture. And then I'm bringing the line down to reduce the highlights and kind of give like an orange yellow glow where the whites appear which have a nice contrast with the blue at the bottom, which I will bring out in a second. So I'm changing the color of the texture by the RGB channels of the curve layer. So right now I'm on the green channel, now the blue channel. And I'll show you a quick before and after right here. So I'm clicking the layer on and off, look at that difference. And then I just duplicated that layer. And wow, just using one texture twice, the same texture. And then I just flip the second layer horizontally so that there's even more texture on either side of the photo. This is the second texture from Brooke Shaden that I'm going to use. 
I'm going to flip it upside down is the first thing I'm going to do because I want the lines of the texture to appear at the bottom open space of the photo and not to get in the way of um, the subject. And I'm going to change the blending mode to multiply. And then I'm going to change it again to soft light. So you can see that's just an example of two different blending modes. Um, I can't really say that I use one blending mode more than the other, but if I had to choose, it'd probably be soft light, like the blending mode I just used for the second texture. And I'm going to reduce the opacity and fill the texture a little bit so it's not so heavy. And then I'll go in with curves once again after clicking the layer on and off. Well, first I'm going to create a layer mask and erase some of the lines away from my body so that the texture doesn't affect the skin of the subject of the photo. And then I'm going to paint back in where I need to paint back in after erasing away just to perfect the composite and the blending. And that's just a before and after. Erase away from my foot a little bit. Here's the third texture from Brookshade and yes, I know I love Brookshade and textures. This is the third one I'm using. Oh, I just said that. Um, and yeah, I'm just going to stretch that out and change the blending mode to multiply. And then I'm going to see if there's another blending mode that I like even better. Um, it looks like I'm going to stick with multiply. And then it just makes it really dark looking. So I'm going to raise the line in a curves layer of the texture up so that the photo completely brightens. And then I'm going to my selective color adjustment layers, which allow me to have more full control over the colors than just the RGB channels of a curves layer, if that makes sense. So right now I'm on the red channel and I'm going to the blue channel and adding more cyan, which as you can see makes a huge difference at the bottom of the photo where, there's a, where the photo is picked up with a lot of blue colors. And then I'm going to reduce the blacks of the blues, which kind of make the photo more soft looking. Then I'm going to add more saturation and vibrance, which is like the next step I normally do after selective color adjustment layers and once the composite is totally complete. Then I'm going to bring the image into Visco where I can add some natural looking vi vignette. It's always hard to pronounce that word, vignette. <laughs> I, I don't know. I really like the vignette because it just darkens the sides of the picture without affecting the subject in the middle. And then after Visco and Lightroom, I'm bringing the image back into Photoshop where I'm using Photoshop brushes just to paint on the dripping effect of the heart and the brain. So you can find these Photoshop brushes. These are actually paint brushes. I'm not the paintbrush tool. They're paint brushes that you can find on uh, different various websites just Google um, Photoshop brushes and you'll find them for free on tons of websites and basically you just select the color you want and then you use the Photoshop brush just to paint on the brush super easy it's kinda hard to explain but hopefully you have a good understanding watching me do it this is the final image I'm really happy with how it looks mostly you can agree I think it's a texture that really brings it together and makes it very painterly like I really like the lighting too especially on my dress kind of in the middle how it lights up there and I like the details of the paint dripping down I also want to point out the little detail of the rope going over the heart across the middle and I want to point out that detail because at first I had the rope behind the heart and I realized it didn't make sense to be balancing. You need the organ on either side, obviously. Altogether, this photo took me around three hours or more to edit. If you have any questions, please leave me a comment in the comment section below. I will respond as soon as possible. Thank you so much for watching my video. Please subscribe so you don't miss any more. And I'll see you guys for the next one.